is Dr. Quaid, and, he, and this is Mike Peterson, and he's um, going to show us how to work the HRT. Okay, so what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is add the details into the computer system, so HiX, or the interface for um, the HRT, knows who you are, and can you spell your last name for me? Peterson, P-E-D-E-R-S-E-N. First name? Michael. Did a birth start with the month? Uh, July 31st. And I'm going to put in the ancestry. That's important for the database. Okay. So then we click on OK. And we just click which clinic we're in. So we're just going to click on clinic. Now it usually asks for the curvature from the keratometry readings. We're just going to make an assumption here. Okay. 7.7 .7 in both eyes. What's your prescription in your right eye? Um, in my right eye, it's minus uh, 325. With, uh, okay. So in this case, we don't need any astigmatism lens. If we did, we would use a case kind of like this that comes with the HRT, and there's a magnetic lens that basically attaches onto the onto the HRT. So you would take this out, and you would have the axis markings here on the on the lens. When you put it on, there's a white mark on the top, and you would just adjust it to the axis. But for this case, we don't need that lens, so we'll take that off for now, and we'll leave it in the box. Just pop that on the side. So when we hit OK, it's going to take us to another screen. You'll hear a high-pitched noise from the machine, so that's quite normal. We're going to just pause that for now. And we are going to, on the little dial here, you can actually dial in the prescription of the patient. So what I usually do is when you start the scan, I just move that until the image gets as clear as possible. So we're going to turn down the lights. So we have the overhead on, so you can still see. And I'm going to ask you just to pop your glasses off for me. And I'm just going to wipe the chin rest first. The procedure is pretty straightforward. The actual scan usually only takes about 10 or 15 seconds per eye. It's pretty quick. So you set this up the same way as you would with a slit lamp. You want to make sure the patient's pretty comfortable. So if we raise this up, it's going to get you to pop your chin up there for me. And it's going to be a bit of a high pitch noise. So when you're starting the machine, you can adjust the horizontal axis finely with this, and you can go up and down with the wheel here. Okay? So once you have everything roughly aligned, you go back to the main screen, and we're going to click on the button here to start the laser, so you'll hear a high-pitched noise, okay? And what you do is you basically just align it and bring it forward until when the patient blinks, their lashes just touch the lens. So as we're doing that, we're going to look at the screen over here, and then we're going to use this little lens here. So can you see a little green light off to the left of the red box? Mm -hmm. So I want you to look right at that for me. And we're going to change the lens, and you'll see the image over here becoming clearer as I dial in the lens. Okay? Now you're waiting for a green bar to appear up here. There it is. And just blink again for me. Now we're going to press a little button on the back of the HRT here to activate the scan. So what we're going to do is if we go back to the screen again, blink again for me. And just try not to blink or move your eyes just for a few seconds. Keep holding now. It'll take three sweeps. Keep holding. We're almost done. Just another second or two. Good. You can blink. Perfect. Okay, have a seat back for me. So we're going to save that, that eye. And what I tend to do is I tend to look, we're going to pop this back, we're going to save the topography on the right eye. I like to have a peek at the image before we swap over to the other eye so we don't have to set everything up again. So we're going to wait for this to do the calculations. So it usually takes a moment or two. But it's pretty neat because once it generates the picture, it basically takes about 64 scans depth-wise, kind of like a, like a deck of cards. So when you click on the image here, what you can actually see before we put the markers on, if you hit the option for the 3D rendering, you can actually turn this, and you can, look at the, you can show this to the patient, but we can look at the nerve from any particular angle. So it's kind of a neat tool to show the patient from a counseling standpoint. If we go back to the main interface, now we have to tell the computer where the edge of the nerve is. And this is the part that's kind of tricky, because ideally what we should do is have the arrow here and you can see there's a Z profile so it shows the profile of the nerve head. Ideally you want to be hitting it right about here so at the point where you're not still within the cup. So what I tend to do is I tend to just kind of put it where I think it looks sensible and there's no real guidelines on this. I mean I've, I've heard about 10 different, opin 10 different opinions from 10 different folks but what I tend to do is I tend to make sure I'm not sitting inside the optic nerve. I put it where I think it looks sensible. We right click to accept it and then I look at the profile on the 3D rendering just to, just to make sure that I'm not dipping into the cup. You want to be pretty much on the rim. It's not a big deal if you go too far out, but you just don't want to go too far in. 
So the software is going to keep that consistent for every scan going forward. And that's one eye done. So we got a good scan. How do we know this is important in our discussion coming up? The standard deviation of the scan is 11 microns, which means, in my mind, anything less than 20 microns is a, is a very good scan, and that's going to tie into the question of how do we determine change going forward. If you look at the GDX and the OCT, good instruments, but my big problem with those instruments is that they don't have a, a, a measurement of the standard deviation of the scan. If you're looking for change, um, the studies out there right now, in terms of sensitivity and specificity I've, specificity, I've found no difference between the HRT, the GDX, and the OCT in terms of sensitivity and specificity. There has been no study done today to look at progression between the three instruments. My honest opinion, uh, the HRT has been around for longer. It's got a database that is more extensive. Also, the topographic change analysis that we'll talk about in a bit. It's, it's easy to move the cursor around within the nerve to look at how many microns change at any particular location within the nerve. But how do we know that's a significant change is you have to tie it back to the standard deviation of the scan. And we all know from the dark days of stats that certainly anything that would be, say, five standard deviations away from the noise would definitely be change. If we're looking for change of this much and the noise in our image is this much, then our test, no matter what instrument we use, is useless. So we have to make sure that we have an idea of what this is. I tend to use a guideline of 100 microns change, uh, which is about five times the standard deviation, assuming that the SD is 20 or less. Okay?